Hello, I'm Dr. Lauren Stryker. Diabetes is a serious disease affecting millions of people in the U.S. today. Both type 1 and type 2 diabetes cause abnormally elevated levels of sugar in the blood when we eat. Because diabetes is a disorder in the way the body metabolizes food, let's look first at the process of digestion and how it normally works. During and immediately after a meal, our body begins to break down food molecules, including carbohydrates, into sugar molecules, one of which is glucose. Glucose is a simple sugar that provides the fuel that every cell in your body needs to survive. After we eat, glucose is absorbed directly into the bloodstream, and our blood sugar levels rise sharply. This sends a signal to the beta cells of the pancreas, instructing them to secrete just the right amount of insulin to manage the sugar. Insulin enters the bloodstream, rising to peak levels within 10 minutes of eating. Its task is to facilitate the entry of glucose into the body's cells, particularly the cells of the muscles and liver. There, glucose is either used to power the cell's activities or it is stored for future use. Once blood glucose levels are at their maximum, the pancreas slows down insulin production. The liver plays an important role in this process as well, storing excess glucose until the body needs more energy. It's a wonderful balancing act. In the case of type 1 diabetes, the pancreas does not produce enough insulin. And in type 2 diabetes, the pancreas may produce enough insulin, but the cells of the body have become resistant to its effects. They have become insulin resistant and cannot absorb the glucose they need. In both cases, glucose is unable to get into the cells to do its work. It remains in the bloodstream, building up to dangerously high concentrations, a condition known as hyperglycemia. Because the body cannot use the excess glucose, it spills over into the urine and is lost. As a result, the body's cells are deprived of the fuel they need in order to function and survive. Most likely, the person will experience extreme hunger and thirst, weakness, and weight loss. This concentration of glucose in the bloodstream has a number of potentially devastating consequences in the body, from the head down to the toes. Most at risk are your heart, nerves, kidneys, and eyes. Let's look at some of the most common and dangerous complications. The primary cause of death among people with type 2 diabetes is cardiovascular disease. High blood sugar can damage blood vessels and coronary arteries. Diabetics are at a greater risk for developing arteriosclerotic plaque, which narrows the blood vessels, increasing the risk of heart attacks and stroke. Additionally, people with diabetes also have a diminished ability to heal wounds. This occurs for several reasons, but the two most important are a reduced ability of white cells in the bloodstream to remove bacteria and a reduction in the amount of oxygen delivered to the wound. Because of this, diabetics are at a higher risk for developing serious infections and generally will require a significantly longer time to heal. Over time, high blood sugar levels can cause nerve damage or neuropathy. This damage makes it difficult for the nerves to carry messages to the brain and other parts of the body. The result is a loss of feeling or a painful tingling sensation in parts of the body, most commonly in the feet. This means diabetics are at a higher risk for injury, injuries which frequently go unnoticed and can become infected. High levels of blood glucose increase the risk that diabetics will develop kidney disease, known as nephropathy, a serious condition in which the kidneys are unable to rid the body of wastes. Diabetes is the leading cause of kidney disease, counting for nearly 45% of all new cases. In the eyes, Diabetes can lead to a number of complications. The most common and most serious of these is retinopathy. High blood sugar can damage your retina, the tissue at the back of your eyes that captures light and relays information to your brain. Nearly half of all people with diabetes have some degree of retinopathy. The longer you have diabetes, the more likely it is you'll develop this condition. In general, the best way to prevent much of the damage that can occur with diabetes is to stick to a healthy diet and exercise plan. It's also important that you maintain your drug regimen as prescribed by your doctor. 
Now that you know how diabetes affects the body, you can learn more about the methods of controlling this disease in our How Do I Control It chapter. Thanks for watching.